authority was unassuming yet distinguished. We can all join and say that we have never come into contact with anyone like Bishop David Greaves. And although our human hearts and minds may be pained right now as we have lost the valiant general of faith, our spirits rejoice on this night, a night of thanksgiving as we reflect on one who has truly fought a good fight, finished his course and kept the faith. What is probably one of the most outstanding qualities of our bishop was that he was a worshipper and a worshipper indeed. Sometimes when leaders get to such positions in Christian ministry, it's as if they receive a PEC standing for a praise exemption certificate. They sit stony faced and disengaged when the congregation are in worship, but not our bishop Greaves. He truly led by example. Head bowed, hands raised, knees bent, he worshipped God in the silence and the shout, the stillness and the dance. He spent everything in worship. Our Bishop Breeze was truly like the David in the Bible when he worshipped. I saw our Bishop dance. I heard our Bishop sing. I heard our Bishop preach powerful sermons. I saw him leave some of the most powerful services. Everything he did flowed from his worship to God. I can just hear Bishop now. If God be God, serve him. Worship. 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 And when words were not enough, you would hear him breathe out a sound. Ay, yai, 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 yai. Then the worship was so much, our bishop gave everything unto God. And so from the balcony to the view, let us give God a mighty shout of praise in the house of God tonight. He is Thanksgiving. So I want you to lose yourself because you know what? Our bishop has been promoted to glory and his story has been perfected. Hallelujah. Promoted to glory. He has a perfect story. Tonight we worship God in spirit and in truth. And at this time I want to invite our praise and worship team who will be leading us into a time of worship. God bless you in Jesus' name. I believe worship should be easy tonight, right? Amen. I greet you all in Jesus' name. Amen. We've come to worship to celebrate a man of God as we've heard. So we're just going to do that. We're going to worship the Lord. Amen. Amen.
And it's for all of us, because we all go through things. I believe none of us are immune, but whatever it is. Got you in the river That seemed Why? Because 
because the steadfast love of the Lord never, never, never ceases. Hallelujah. Some may love us today and they don't love us tomorrow, but the love of the Lord never, never ceases. His love never ceases. Hallelujah. His mercies never come to an end. Hallelujah. We thank you that they are new every morning, Lord. New every morning. New every morning. New every morning. Thank you, Jesus. Great is our faith.
it will be a program, but our bishop was led by the Spirit. If he needed to praise, he needed to praise. And you had to praise with him because he was going to take his time to worship the Lord. Because that is why we're here tonight. So don't stop worshipping tonight. Whatever's going on, it's about thanksgiving and praise unto God. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Amen, amen. At this time, I'm going to invite our Reverend... Anthony Carter from New Testament Assembly later, who is going to open in prayer at this time. Let's bow our heads in Jesus' name. We get ready to continue. Because we get ready to pray. As we reverence the presence of the living God. Father, in the name of Jesus, even as we, your people, stand here in your presence on this memorable, momentous occasion, we could say it is an occasion that we stand with mixed feeling of emotion. But in the midst of all of this, Lord, we are asking you, divine God, to touch each and every one that shall participate in this thanksgiving service. We ask, divine God, that you will auctionize them because we realize that they cannot function without the auction. And even as they do so, Lord, we ask, Lord, that you will cause your people's heart to be comforted. We ask, Divine God, Lord, that you will bring about motivation in the hearts of your people on this occasion. We ask, Divine God, that you will cause your people to praise you. Oh, great God Almighty, in the midst of this service, Divine God, we are declaring your will right now in the name of Jesus. Even as we speak the word of God, we speak it for we believe it, we believe it and we speak it, for we call it done right now in Jesus' name. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. At this time we're going to invite our right reverend, Deborah Powell, the National Revival Bishop of New Testament Assembly to give a welcome. First to our King Eternal in water, invisible and invincible, to the only wise God to whom be all glory, dominion and power. We give you praise on this evening. We've come tonight to give thanks for our beloved departed Bishop David Graves. We've come to say thank you, Lord, for his life, his witness for a life so well lived, so well invested. We've come to give God thanks and to celebrate uh, Bishop David. But we've also come to stand in solidarity with the Greaves family. And as I turn to Reverend Marlene, to Oliver, Ashley, Philippa, Joe and Elliot, somewhere out there. To the immediate family and to the family of origin, brothers Timothy, Ishmael, Trevor, and I can't see you all. We've come to stand in solidarity with you, to support you in your time of grief. You are grieving and we are grieving with you. And I pray that tonight you'll find strength in worship. And I pray that as the various speakers come up and speak about Bishop Red David, that you'll be encouraged in your time of grief. My job is really just to welcome you all. And so well, I'm not surprised by the turnout. Uh, and I believe there are more people coming. It doesn't surprise me at all to see so many people coming. For some of you, the journey here was more than just a trip across town. From Birmingham, I believe we have. Uh, 
Thank you, brother. Just stand with you. I want the family to see you. Praise God for those who come down from Birmingham, from Northampton, Wolverhampton, the Midlands, and God bless you. I suspect there were one or two of you for whom the journey was a plane ride from overseas. Anyone from overseas? Praise the Lord for our, our speaker for tonight, Reverend Apostle Valentine. Now let me invite all the ministers, all the members of the clergy to stand where you are. Just stand over here, wherever you are positioned in. All the members of the clergy to stand. And will the rest of you just appreciate them?
welcome at this time the Leighton Choir in Jesus' name. I'm going to go with what I have. I've got about two minutes left.
we give God thanks for the interlater choir. What a message to us tonight, and we're in the house of the Lord all the days of our life. Some of us don't know that amongst the many things our bishop did, he once upon a time led the choir. Do you know our bishop could sing? He loved music, he loved to worship, amen. At this time we're going to be having a short series of tributes from uh, members of the NTA Leighton Church. Now at this time, please be mindful of each other. And we don't have a lot of time as there's much to celebrate tonight. So between the three speakers, you have 10 minutes in total. That means that's just over three minutes each. Please love me tonight. Okay. And let's work together okay. in Jesus' name. So at this time, I'm going to call our first two speakers. Actually, this counts as one, but they're going to come together. Please welcome Brother Alvin and Brother Andrew. That will be followed by Reverend Janet King and then Sister Livia. Put your hands together and welcome them. Thank you. I've got to switch the camera, change it. Thank you, thank you. Good evening, church. Good evening. Uh, this is... One of the most difficult evenings for me this evening. Bishop Greaves, Bishop Greaves. Uh, you can say it was our bishop. As far as I'm concerned, it was my bishop. Amen. Uh, it was, it was a man that, uh, you know, when you speak to him, he doesn't say anything at all until when you finish. And then he will talk to you, quiet his tone. And by the time he finish with you, you, you're convinced. But you know, it's tough. It's tough. It's uh, it's like I've lost a brother. Because uh, Bishop was one of these people that you know, uh, when you're out with him, it's just like one of the boys. You know, he'll drink what you drink, apart from alcohol. <laughs> You will eat what you eat. And he doesn't mind who it is. He will uh, come and sit with you. Now, I was out with Bishop once and uh, he said, hang on a minute, you know, we're just walking the road. And he said, hang on a minute. And uh, I wonder what it's all about. But there was a guy there sitting outside the road on a bench. He was. He didn't ask us for anything, but Bishop took a hand and he went back and he talked to the man. And then Bishop put his hand in his pocket and handed him something. You know, I was ashamed of myself <laughs> because I think I should have done it, but that was Bishop. You know, and I didn't realize that a day like this would come where I had to speak in on behalf of the family and my bishop. But God bless his soul. If he doesn't reach heaven, I don't think anybody as well. <laughs> Praise the Lord Church. Greetings to everyone. Greetings, Sister Morgan and families. And love and peace. Bishop, um, the person I was Bishop put me where I am now, convincing, no matter how you say it, Bishop, and what, it's still convincing, live for the Lord, no matter what we do, he's so loving, he's courteous, he's humble, a part of me is gone from here. But we have to be strong. It's sad, but we have to be strong, all strong. So, I don't have a lot to say. I love him. He's like my dad. I 
as I say, the person I usually be, Bishop put me here. And I thank him for that from my heart. And I know that he's in a resting place. And that's the way the Lord wants him. And he's honest, he's obedient. And remember this people of God, are always that Christians. Think about your life. It doesn't stop at the cross, church of God, people of sins. We have to continue to preach the words. He just said his, his disciples, go oh, near the world, preach it. Never stop until you get his desire. So blessed be the name of God, we are soon coming King. Peace. Should we praise the Lord, saints? Should we praise the Lord again? One more time. Praise the name of the Lord. Bishop loved to worship. My fondest memories of him is him as him worshiping. But you know, yesterday I was going through some paperwork and I saw a message that I had taken down that he preached on the 3rd of January 2015. And the first thing he said was, prayer is the breath of the church. Praise the name of the Lord. He said, because it gives the church life. And indeed, without prayer, prayer is communicating with God. Prayer is getting an answer from God. Prayer is telling us what, telling God what we need. Because he said we should. I just want to encourage you. To stand strong. Bishop stood. And he loved the children. I want to tell you that he loved the children. I asked him once to come down and just greet the children. Because it's good for the young to know who is in charge. Bless the name of the Lord. And he came down and he encouraged them. And they loved him. You know when Bishop passed away, we asked the children, give their little thoughts about him. Some said he was always smiling. Some said he was patient. Some said he was kind. Some said he was loving. But the children all knew their bishop. And I just want to give thanks to God for loaning us this man for a period of time. We are only here for a period of time. Make your mark. Stand your ground. Don't be afraid. The Bible said the righteous is as bold as a lion. Be bold, saints. Stand your ground and hold fast. Our, bush, our bishop holds fast and he's with the saints in glory. He's in the bosom of Jesus Christ and that's where we all want to go. So stand strong. Keep praying in Jesus' name. Um, I'm extending condolences to the family. Um, we're praying for you. Um, on behalf of the youth, we did really, really love our bishop. Um, he had such a passion for the youth. He loved young people. Um, at dinner, he'd come and sit with us and ask us, you know, what were we doing? Um, are we working? Asking about our studies. He really cared about the young people. And he would take time and sit and listen. Like, he would listen to you and you felt comfortable around him but he was that he was so humble and like my prayer lately has been if I could have just half of the humility and like the passion for God that Bishop had I would be happy because he was such a humble man such a passionate man like passionate about God and you know he would sit in that corner and just worship his eyes would be closed and he would just be rocking back and worshiping God and we really did love our bishop but we know that he's gone home to be with the Lord and he's worshiped what he loves best that's what he's doing right now he's in the arms of his father worshiping and having a wonderful time so we love him we miss him but we know that he's with his savior amen Isn't it amazing that when everyone is saying the same thing, that you know it's the truth? We don't have to try to find words. This is who our bishop was. Amen. We're going to stand together at church and we're going to sing a congregational hymn. Great is thy faithfulness. Let's stand together and let's sing this to the glory of God.
great is thy faithfulness. Oh.
bless the name of Jesus. The presence of God is in this place. Oh, we worship you, God. We thank you, God, for grateful heart. Thank you, Lord. Amen. One more time, please give God praise for the wonderful kindred spirit who has us Again, the same rules apply. With time, we're going to be having our senior Pastor Burke from our Fort Neve Assembly. We're going to have our Reverend Edwards from the Birmingham Church. We're going to have Reverend Dr. Carver Anderson. And we're also going to have Reverend Moses Mobide. So please welcome them as they come to us right now. somewhere in the corner worshiping and praising God. I want to give God thanks for his life and his faithfulness. If there is a man who holds on to his faith, he's our Bishop David Graves. I knew that man when he was just a young man. With his other brothers, I don't think they remember me. But I watch him daily grow to the man and the man that he became, the bishop that he came, the passion that he had for people, the passion that he had for souls. He take time out for people. And that's the type of man. Bishop was. <laughs> On his commitment to the world and planet heart, I pray to God that he will continue on and on as long as life lasts. I just want to encourage this family. I know at this time they are yes. and they are weak. But I know that God is in control. Yes. Hallelujah. And after the weeping, I'm praying that the body of Christ, who is the church, for these weeks and months and days, we will continue to pray for the family and to bear them up. Hallelujah. And after all is said and done, I pray and hope that we all will meet around the wonderful throne of God's glory in Jesus' name. Let's praise the Lord, everyone. Let's give God a wave. Let's give my condolences to the 
degrees family, praise the Lord. I uh, just come from Birmingham just to celebrate this Thanksgiving of the life of Bishop David Green's video of today. As I said, it's mixed emotions. <laughs> it was not the report I was looking for, but nevertheless, we are here, praise God. And we've been fellowshipping with NTA for many, many years. And over those years when I was a little boy growing up, <laughs> I used to say I used to crawl beneath the chairs. <laughs> and I grew up in church. I came into church, came back, got saved and moved up. And Bishop has always been there, praise the Lord. Yes. And when I was stepping into an era of the office here in areas, he always had a word of encouragement to me. The phone would ring at the time I didn't expect. And someone on the other end would say, do you know who this is? And I would try to recognize the voice. It was Bishop. When I was at a point where I was wondering something, he was hearing from God to give me a word of strength and encouragement. He had a wonderful way of connecting himself to people and holding onto that connection in a wonderful way. It amazed me. People in me to take their number, they come back to me and says, Oh, did you know Bishop please rang me? Yes. And gave me a word of encouragement to go forward. Yes. God gave us a wonderful gift to the body of Christ. Let us remember the great work that God used him to do for us and for the kingdom of God. As I give thanks to you all in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the living Jesus. I just want to say thank you so much to God for the life of Bishop David Graves. I've known, I've lost the father. I've lost someone who is so dearly to my ministry, to my life. When Bishop Marvin Powell was getting tired and passing away, he gave me a letter. So I take it to David Greaves. He will take over what I do for your ministry. Amen? Amen. And from that point in time, he has always been there. He did everything possible to bring me up, to bring the ministry up, to do everything. Amen? Amen. And here we are. I've lost a father, lost a friend. On behalf of my wife and our church, I want to give God all the thanks and glory for what He has been able to do for us. Amen. I pray to God. Oh, praise the Lord. I just say amen together. Amen. Say amen together. Amen. Reverend Mali, thank you so much. The Lord encourage all of us together in Jesus' name.
melanin, sorry. And I'd just like to say to the family, my dearest, Reverend Marlene, sons, daughter, hey. You see this dad here that you have, and your husband here? He's also special to us. But you know what? When I looked at the tributes on Facebook, those of you who've been on Facebook and seen all the tributes, you have said, sir, if something is repeated about 10 times, there's some truth in it. When I looked at it's repeated 10, 20, 30, Hallelujah. And I look at Bishop David. In fact, he's got two powerful names, David and Wetfield. Those are two powerful names. And he was a priest. And he was indeed a man after God's own heart. And when I wrote my tribute on Facebook, this is what I wrote. Bishop David Greaves was a man who sought to please God in words and actions, known to be a man as a humble servant of God. Bishop David, his dear wife, Reverend Marlene and family, navigated through the competing challenges and joys of ministry. If you're a pastor or a minister, it ain't always easy. You get that right. So they navigated, you, woman of God, navigated through the joys and challenges of ministry. The human perspective now echoes, is God too soon? That's the human perspective. But when God said, David, my son, your work on earth is done. Come home, my child. Hey! I wish I could say to God, hold up a little bit. If I could have negotiated on your behalf, and his behalf, if it was the money, I'll come back to all the money. If it was intellectualism, I would go to all the universities and get all the intellectual minds to come and negotiate with them. If it was a bad man, to be get on the bad man, right with them, I said, see you next.
I want to use that song, Is That Okay? And I said yes, and I said, but Rev, just to let you know that my father-in-law is also traveling. So we were both kind of speechless, and then on the Wednesday, my father-in-law, Bishop Crossfield, passed away. Oh. And I rang Marlene, and we were on the phone, and it was kind of like silent, but not silent. It was a loud silence. But I thank God that two great men have gone on to glory, and I know that their legacy is not over. I recognize that us that are still here in the kingdom, there's work for us to do. And I get that in our grieving. It comes in different guises, and it comes in different forms, but our bishop, his favorite scripture was Deuteronomy 33, and the first stanza of verse 27 says, the eternal God is our refuge, and underneath are his everlasting arms. And I'm encouraging the family that no matter how long grief takes you, remember that underneath are the everlasting arms of Jesus. And the song that we're gonna minister, it was myself and my sister, Sister Janet, we wrote it in 2014 to celebrate the life of our late parents. And the song is called Promoted to Glory.
ministry. Hallelujah. Promoted to glory. He has fought a good fight. He has finished his course. He's kept the faith. And Jesus Christ is saying, well done. Well done. Well, what an accolade when Christ can say about a servant, well done. Amen. We are sure tonight that uh, Christ approves of our bishop Greaves. Well done. Once again, we are hands together for the Simpson and the Cross. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. At this time, you'll see on your programs there is a, a very beautiful word in the program called uh, panegyric. And I'm going to define that for you. Amen. I'm going to interpret those tongues. <laughs> A panegyric is an eloquent oration or writing in praise of a person. It is formal or elaborate praise. The one person that we're going to put in the spotlight at this time is no other than our late Bishop David Reeves, and this will be delivered by our Reverend Devon Burke at this time. Reverend Devon Burke, on this Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Greeting our dear lady Greaves and family, the brothers and family of our Bishop David Whitfield Greaves, our bishops, ministers, and saints in the house of God. We are here to pay tribute to our Bishop. David Whitfield Greaves. And I need to do justice to these words that have been written by none other than our Reverend Neslin Sterling. I am glad, like you, that our brother took the time to explain what a panegyric is. I also, at the first time I'd seen this word, so I looked it up. And there's a little bit more to it than just high praise, that's one side of it. It comes from ancient Greek, and it is high praise in a solemn assembly. And we know we are in a solemn assembly today. And the Greeks knew all about solemn assemblies. And they knew about praise. But we know about praise more than any other people. Amen? Amen? God himself praises. We can imagine just as he was saying of Job. Have you considered my servant Job? We can imagine him saying, have you considered my servant Bishop David Greaves? And we need to live our lives that God can say of us, have you considered? So the panegyric for Bishop David Whitfield Greaves, a man of integrity. As with King David, Bishop David Whitfield Greaves shepherded his people with integrity of heart and guided them with skillful hands. David came to faith in 1972 and was catapulted to ministry within a few years. He is revered for his recognition and service to the marginalized, the less fortunate, and those who fall outside the boundaries of social and societal norms. He was a great spiritual leader with a passion for Christ, to be made known to the people around him and the salvation of souls. His greatest desire was to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. His spiritual attributes, fervor for God's work and willingness to become involved attracted national attention. And having served as choir director and the superintendent of the Leighton Sunday School, he was ordained as a New Testament Assembly minister. To adequately prepare, and in keeping with his ambition for leadership, 
David attended and gained his diploma in ministry at the London School of Theology. Shortly after this achievement, he transferred membership to the Tootin New Testament Assembly, where his qualities were immediately recognised and he became an intuitive member of the pastoral team and authored its first strategic plan. David was committed to the advancement and personal development of NTA members and was intricately involved in the inception and development of the Institute of Theology and Christian Counseling, then known as the Institute of Christian Training. He served as a board member and as an accredited lecturer by the University of Wales, Lampeter, from which ICCT gained its accreditation. David was always strategic in his thinking and helped to shape the Institute, which offered accredited certificates and diploma courses in ministerial theology. With a special place in his heart and mission, he visited and positively impacted the churches in India, Ghana, the Republic of South Africa, and engaged well with the NTA churches in Canada, the USA and Jamaica. He was a passionate teacher of the word, and these churches benefited from his uncompromising preaching and teaching. He was also an active member of the NCA International Executive Board from its genesis in 1994 to August 2016. David was a social engineer and was attracted to like organisations for employment, namely the Tear Fund, the, Evang sorry, the Evangelical Alliance, and was also the director of the New Testament Assembly Community Flagship Project, the Neighbourhood Centre, for the elderly and recovering mental health clients. He held this position for a number of years and was responsible for the yearly business plan, managing staff, the facilities, and most importantly, negotiating service procurements with local authorities. History attests that David was the youngest National Executive Board member to be appointed. His devotion, attention to detail and financial acumen lent itself to his appointment as the organization's National Treasurer, a position he held until he was appointed in 1989 as the National Presiding Bishop to succeed the late Bishop Donald Bernard. He was the third National Presiding Bishop of the New Testament Assembly, England, and served faithfully for 14 years. At the onset of his tenure as Bishop, he published his vision in the form of The Journey to Jordan. The Jordan Journey. This document succinctly outlines the leadership transition, the incorporation of younger ministers into management, and leadership of the organisation, and some key stepping stones and areas for development. This was indeed a defining and strategic document which galvanised the members of the NTA and brought about smooth transition. Other defining events during his tenure as Bishop, as he worked in tandem with the National Executive Board, now the Trustee Board, were the incorporation of the South Croydon New Testament Assembly Church, the planting of the NTA New Generation Church in Nottingham, the purchase of the New Generation Church in David's Lane in Nottingham, the purchase of the Aquaba Centre in Deptford, and the appointment of 72 emerging leaders in 2011, also participating in their training, and masterminding the celebration of NTA's 50th anniversary in 2011. From 2004 until his transition, Bishop David was senior pastor of where we currently are, late to New Testament Assembly. He worked tirelessly as an evangelist, teacher, mentor, pastor, 
edifying, encouraging and caring for the flock. As a local pastor, he never lost the common touch, something we've heard about often today, and was much respected and endeared by young and old alike. Bishop Greaves epitomizes the servant's leader and modeled what it meant to lead with diligence, sacrificially, and with integrity. The National Assembly, National New Testament Assembly, International, Bishop's Executive Council, and Board of Trustees pays tribute to Bishop David Whitfield Greaves, a man after God's own heart. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd like you to do one thing before we hand back. I'd like us to all stand and give God praise for the life of our bishop. Let's give God praise. Sandra Valentine, which is the congregation. Come on, give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Come on, somebody. Come on, give him praise. So we're grateful for another moment when he will continue to speak. But he has been speaking. We praise him for uh, this gathering and for the reason we have gathered. Um, though for us, it is a loss. Let's admit it. Come on, somebody. But for heaven, it's a gain. Amen? We honor our national bishop and his lady, first lady. Both of you, we bless God for you and for all the servants of God in the house, amen? amen. But we wanna take time out to honor the Greece family, and um, it's no big deal that I'm here. I would not let this woman, let me be in Florida, where it's warm and nice and cozy, and not be where it's cold <laughs> next to my friend. I just wanna say to you, Lady Grace, and to Oliver, Ashley, Philippa, Elliot, Joel, Dele, uh, Melanie and to Zara and Olivia May that you have a friend now across the oceans anytime for you. I want to bless God for the brothers, the sister, the nieces, the nephews, the extended family, and for this church. Because we're all one. Amen? Yes. Well, we heard you, Simpson family. Don't mourn, because he's, he's in a better place, isn't he? All right, let me do what my assignment is. Pray for me. 
I thought it was going to be easier than this. But when you understand your connection, you understand you grieve as your friend grieves. Well, sort of, think. not kind, not, not exactly, but sort of. I, I feel the pain more and, and um, cry with you and laugh when you need to laugh as well. Because there will be memories. There will be times when you will crack a joke because you remember something funny that he did or said. Amen? Amen. Amen? John chapter 12, St. John chapter 12, and verse 24. And, um, pray for me. Oh, I've been preaching for 20, 30 years. A few times I've been nervous. This is one of those. Amen. John 12, 24. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. As a matter of fact, we'll read uh, verses 23 and 24. Jesus replied, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. I tell you the truth. Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains alone, or it remains a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Allow me to read also from 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 17 and 18. For a light and momentary, uh, momentary <laughs> troubles, listen, Antigua will come from. That makes me up with all the English accent here. <laughs> for a light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is unseen is temporary, but what is seen is eternal. I'd like to speak to us for a few moments on the topic, the glory of dying. The glory of dying. The kingdom of God is paradoxical in nature. So to be exalted, you've got to be humble. To be rich, you've got to be poor. To be first, you've got to be last. And to live, you've got to die. On the third day of creation, God separated the waters and he commanded the ground to bring forth vegetation, Genesis 1, 10, and 11. And the purpose was clearly defined. The formation was fulfilling. Everything God made carries the potential to produce. So may I read for us John 12, 24 from the Amplified Bible. Actually, it's from another version, forgive me. I tell you the truth, unless a grain of wheat is planted in the ground and dies, it remains a solitary seed. But when it is planted, it produces in debt a great harvest. When it is planted, it produces in debt a great harvest. May I suggest to us this morning, this, this today, that, that Bishop David Greaves is a seed that has been planted. And if you can hold that thought and just follow me. Because you need to understand what's a seed. Can I help you? Because a seed might look just like something dry and like, you know, we use it for what? Pea soup and bumbu soup and whatever. But, but, but a seed is a fruit. A seed is posterity. A, a seed is offspring. A seed is, is, is beginning. A seed is source, a seed is core, a seed is sperm, a seed is genesis. So Bishop David Greaves is a seed, a fruit, a posterity, a beginning, a source, a core, a sperm, a genesis. And with every seed, there is life, there's potential, there's possibility. With every seed, there's a possibility for reproduction. Because you've got to understand that within the seed is life, within the seed is the capacity, the ability to bring forth. And so within every tiny seed that you see, the ones you eat to, Lord, plenty planting aside out. Every tiny seed, every tiny seed you see, there's a tiny plant 
that is already, here it is, already developed within that seed. But, but you need to understand, hear me tonight, that if you have those seeds on your shelf or in your cupboard or in a can or canister, wherever you store your seeds, they, 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 they're, they're just seeds with potential. But if you place your seeds in the right environment, the conducive environment where, where there's water, where there's heat, where there's the ability to break open the outer coating of the seed, then that which is within the seed emerges and comes forth and we get more seeds and more seeds and more seeds. Are you hearing me today? So, so, so here we are, saying goodbye to a seed. And unless the seed dies. He stands alone. He stands alone as Bishop David Whitfield agrees. But, 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 but because he's di he died, because, because he, he, he's died, he is now, he's now showing to us and will demonstrate to us he has the capacity to multiply himself. Amen. He now has the capacity to reproduce himself. And so don't be surprised if you still, you see popping up next month and the next month and several years from down the, from here, many little David Green. Because somebody said he was a father to me. And we don't understand spiritual fatherhood and spiritual parenting. But when you understand spiritual fatherhood, somebody gave birth to you in the spirit. Somebody gave birth to you for where you are today. And had it not been for a father in the spirit who groaned in the nighttime season, who Anymore. 
beloved. Yeah. Bishop Greens lived to die. Let me say that again. He lived to die. He was a man of worship. He was a man of the presence of God. In those two and a half hours, I had my iPad with me. I put on music and we worship. And the nurse would come in and we paused and we got back to worship. Then Ashley came and he interrupted our work. But a seed has got to be released. If it's going to get to its potential. So what we're doing today, family, is releasing a seed. And if you could see from God's perspective, if you could elevate your thinking to think like God for a moment, you could see that he is seeing not death. But life. But he's seeing life. Are you with me? For the glory of dying dying is that it's a start, not an ending. You see, he he ended he ended this life on earth on the 17th of December 2016. And like you, I was shocked when I got the call. I'm like, what, 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 what? I asked about, I don't know, a dozen times. Because somebody wasn't making any sense. He was better. He was home. Where we could Makes no sense. And if we don't understand death, and truly we don't, right? Our theology of death says it's final. Our theology of death sometimes tells us that that's it. He thought he God. But we need to change our theology and understand that dying and death is only the beginning. It's only a transition from this earthly life to a heavenly life. So the glory of dying is really a beginning, a start. And on December 16, there was a commencement exercise. Next, you are next in line 
to be in the game. You're next in line to, 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 to continue what he started. Jesus modeled for us. He said, that which I started, now you got to finish. you got to continue. And so his transition means that you and I are going to now take up from where he left off. Is anybody home? So here's an opportunity to not just cry. And it's okay to cry. Here's an opportunity not only to reflect, and we should reflect. But here's an opportunity to say, how can we truly make his legacy last? And that is to live out the life he taught us. I recall going to Hern Bay with ministers in the early 90s here in England. And when I shared with Lady Greaves the intensity of which her husband worshipped, she too was surprised. He literally rolled on the floor. Oblivious to who was watching or who did to watch. Because my eyes should have been closed. Tell the truth and shame the devil. But how many of you are watchers in worship? Oh, I just got that one. Watchers in worship. So I'm a watcher. I'm usually intense myself in worship. But I watch this man of God. And he he abandoned himself in worship. The other experience I had that blew me away, I was here some years ago and I was scheduled to preach a Sunday morning and we were in his office and we, he said, let's pray. And as we prayed together, he was literally falling off the seat because he prayed for the supernatural to be demonstrated in his time and in his season. He was praying to see signs and wonders. He was praying for the church of God to arise in glory and splendor. That was his heart. He longed to see miracles. And so we might be tempted to ask like Martha. So Jesus, where were you? Where were you on December 16th, 17th? 2016 at about 4.30 in the afternoon. He is your friend, wasn't he? He was your friend. He was, he was, he was a man who loved you passionately. He was a man who abandoned himself to the cause of Christ. Where were you? And he would say to Martha and to Mary, and he'd say to us, Jesus would, if you would believe you would see the glory. If you would believe, you'd see that there is a glory in me allowing my son to be transitioned to heaven. For in the glory of dying, we need to understand that the warfare. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You gotta understand, through many dangerous toils and snares, you gotta understand, he, he came, he came through. And so the glory of dying is that warfare is accomplished. He, 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 he can now say like the Apostle Paul in 2 Timothy 6 and 8. For I am already being poured out like a drink offering. And the time of my departure is near. I believe he would say to you, Brother Rashad, I have fought a good fight. He would say, Son, I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now, there is in store for me the crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award. I highlighted the crown of righteousness which he will award to me on that day. So what we see and what we deem as a loss in earth is nothing but a celebration in heaven. In Philippians 1, 20 to 22, Paul says, I eagerly expect and hope that I'll be no more shame, but will be have sufficient courage, so that now as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or death. This was Bishop David Greaves. For to live is, to, is Christ, and to die is gain. Someone said, death is not a period, it's just a comma. Death the last sleep? No, says Walter Scott. It is the final awakening. So I said, my, my brother has finally awakened.
to what he's loved for all these years. Awesome, undiluted, unperverted, uncensored presence of God. He can now worship around the throne without us looking at our clocks and say, come on, Bishop, preach. He can now worship around the throne without saying we got the quiet to end the convention. He can now worship. Oh, that's me. Praise you, Jesus. He can now worship around the throne. Whole and peace. For as we, Lady Breeze, and uh, some of the children were preparing to take his out, his attire to the funeral parlor. And we were finding the finding stuff, and somebody said, Oh, you know, the shoes, whatever. And I, I, they said, No, I'm saying socks. And I'm saying, Socks. And the lady said, No, 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 not socks, socks. And I'm like, No, socks. And they're like, I'm going to get it. I'm like, Oh, yeah. Because if he lost a leg, he only needs a sock. And if he lost a leg, he only needs two, one, one shoe, one shoe. Wow. Can I just tell you that in the presence of his father, I, I can only imagine, oh God, you didn't hear me, that as he transitioned to glory, he didn't need crutches, he didn't need a wheelchair, he didn't need to be carried. He's walking, he's dancing, he's leaping, he's jumping, he's home.
the glory in him dying is now that the warfare, the sickness, has ended. His earthly toil is over. But one, one, one last thing before I turn the mic over. Keep worshiping. Somebody here today, you came because you knew him. He hugged you, he smiled with you, he shook your hand, he served you, he blessed you, he prayed for you, he wed you, he buried your loved one, he baptized you, he counseled you, he cheered you. You're not walking in the faith, you're not walking with the Lord as you ought to. And your only hope of seeing Bishop again is to make that decision in this moment. Oh, I heard how he loves young people, how true. So I want to start with the children, the young people, the young adults, anybody? On the balcony. Could we have all the hands down just for a sec? All the hands down for a sec. Because if you are saying, I want to be an offspring of Bishop David Green, the posterity of this man of God, I want to continue his legacy. I want to catch his mantle of worship and his heart for the disenfranchised. I want to capture his heart for the mission field, which is why his family wore the regalia they're wearing because they wanted to symbolize and symbolically say, my husband, our dad, he loved the nations of the earth. I think if left up to him, he would have been traveling the nations for all of his ministry life. Somebody tonight, you've wrestled with answering yes. You wrestle with saying, I'll go, I'll do, I'll say what he says say. You've wrestled. But Bishop Reeves touched your life and today you're saying, I want to end my wrestling because in his death I want to live to my purpose. In his death I want to die to myself and I want to live for destiny and for purpose. Where you are, wherever you are, come on. I'm looking at the right side at the top of the balcony. Wave at me and say, I'm, I'm one of those. Come on, anybody. All over, to my left, anyone? The main sanctuary, come on, anyone? I see a hand, come on. Anybody, come on. We worship you, Jesus. I'll say, I'll say, I'll say yes. Oh God, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. There's some of you who know that he's raised you as a spiritual son and you understand the weightiness of his death means that You've got to live out this legacy. Who are you? I want to pray for you quickly. I want to ask you to come down. Come on, just lift your hands. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. And we all throw our hands up as we pray. Come on. We worship you, Father. We thank you for this hour. The Lord said to his disciples, should I ask my father to take me from this hour? He says, no, 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 no. It was for this hour that I came. It was for this moment that I lived. I would say, our dearly beloved. The fathers, we all lift our hands. We need to die. Some of us need to die to our own dreams, die to our own wishes, our own ways, our own agendas. We need to die to what we think the church should be like and how we think it should be run. And we need to say, Lord, live in me, live through me. Because only in dying we will see his glory. It's only when the seed allows death to happen that its potential can emerge. So Father, right now we make wherever we are an altar. On the balcony, wherever we are, on the outside, wherever we are, over the internet, we make this very place where we are an altar, an altar of sacrifice. And as one life was sacrificed for many, so too you have access to sacrifice ours, so many sons can come into glory. Father, kiss this moment with your holy presence. Capture our hearts, consume us with holy fire. Let us mark this place, oh God. Let us mark this day and mark this moment as the time and the place where we die. 
to come alive to you, to be awakened to your purpose, and to live for your kingdom and for your kingdom only. In Jesus' name, we give you praise. Somebody give you praise. We have heard from the Lord today. And at this time, we're going to just call our um, pastor study at this time. We're just going to just pray a prayer of comfort for the family as we stand in solidarity with them at this time. Hallelujah. Oh God, oh Father, never we give you thanks and praise for this hour that. We can come to you as our father, as our shepherd, our friend. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to be, what a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. We thank you for a life that is well lived and spent for you. And we thank you, Lord, for the seed that we have sowed over the many years. The seed that now fallen to the ground. It shall bring forth fruit. We pray right now, Lord, that you will bless the family as they face tomorrow, as they face days ahead of them. Many things about tomorrow we don't seem to understand. But we know you hold the future. And I know you hold their hands. Be the comforter that they need. For you tell us that in the days of adversity, adversity you will draw near to us. Father, I pray, God, that you will put your loving arms around them. And you will strengthen them in the Lord. When no one seems to be around, the Bible tells me the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. So today I pray God that your hands will be their divine guide, their divine comfort. And I know that strength will arise as they wait upon the Lord. For they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagle. They shall run and not be weak. They shall walk and not faint. Bless especially today, Reverend Morning, Greaves and the children, grandchildren and the rest of the family. Pray God that you will bless them. And the same God that has been with them over the many years, you will not bring them this far to leave them. But you will be their divine strength. You will be their divine source. And as David says, I will look unto the hills for it's coming my help. Knowing that your help comes from the Lord, which made the heaven and the earth. Father, we give you thanks and we give you praise. And at the end of the day, dear Father, they will lift your hands and heart to heaven. And they will say, Lord, thank you, God, because you have given us the victory through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And everything that they need, your hands will provide, for great is God's faithfulness, Lord, and to us. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Let the church say, So it's for a close, we are going to collect an offering tonight. And then the ushers are going to come forward. And the offering is going to a very special cause, which I will announce after the offering as the offering is being picked up. If you want to start getting the offering together as the praise and worship team, come to us in the song as we give to the Lord.
directing and ushers as you come forward to him.
Glory to his great name. Who is that unto him? Hallelujah. Glory. 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 Glory to the Son of the living God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please be seated all over this house. Just for a few moments. Praise the Lord. First of all, I would just like to acknowledge your presence here in this Thanksgiving service to appreciate our late Bishop David Whitfield Greaves. Thank you for coming from far and near. So on behalf of the Minister's Board here at NTA Leighton, we would just like to thank you for coming and supporting not only us as the church family, but also our David Reeves family. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. I just stand on behalf of the Reeves family here at Leighton just to confirm the arrangements for the homegoing, homegoing service on Wednesday, the 11th of January. Now, as you heard earlier on, our Bishop David Reeves was a man of first things. He was very pioneering in his life, and as he's about to leave us, he's also pioneering his homegoing. So, ask you to be seated by 9.15. We realise it's really early, but we would really appreciate your cooperation if you intend to attend.
godly people who have left a mark on this earth. Amen. As we are closing, I just want to extend to the family our love and our appreciation for who you are. We love you so much. And you don't even, you can't even see half the people. Downstairs itself is so full of people who have not been able to come up here and seen them. Downstairs is completely full. Here was full. Upstairs was full. They all came out for you, member of Bishop Groups. God bless you. God bless you. We closed it, but we had so many wonderful guests with us tonight, and I'm just going to quickly read out some names, just so that you again know how many people came to celebrate with you. We've got Evangelist Claire, Minister Ferdinand, Pastor Bennett, Reverend E. Buckner, Reverend Lloyd Proskell, and Pastor Rhoda Proskell, Reverend Melanie Kerr, Reverend Dr. Carver Anderson, Reverend Raymond Wilkes, Reverend Moses Amabide, Reverend Roel Walker, Reverend Kay Johnson, and Mr. Johnson, Reverend Veronica Reed, Reverend Leon Cameron, Reverend Roy Edwards. This is like a state affair. Reverend Joy Roy, Reverend Pat Roach, Reverend T. Ramsey, Bishop Joel Thomas, Bishop and Reverend David, Dr. David Muir, Reverend Wayne Johnson, Superintendent Jeffrey Folks, Pastor Ade Amuba, Reverend David Okonodude, and Bishop Esme Bezwick. These are obviously, put your hands together for all those that came to worship with us tonight. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Let us stand together at this time. Amen. Truly good worship. And truly we have enjoyed the presence of the Lord. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. We're going to have the benediction at this time. And then I believe our musicians, our uh, band, will play. So come on, let's pour together for the wonderful band tonight. We truly play that we're right Amen. We give our thanks to you. And the wonderful worship team. Put your hands together for the worship team. So when they're going to tonight. Amen. Amen. We're going to call our Reverend Clifton McLean. We will give the benediction and then our musicians will play us out and greet someone and love someone in Jesus' name. Reverend And now may the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the full fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, grace remain and abide in us all. Now and forever, the church say, one last word, if you didn't know, as you look over at the family, every outfit they're wearing belongs to our Bishop David Reeves. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, you can do better than that. This is just a section of his wardrobe. He shows you as a man of style too. Amen. Amen. Yes, amen. God bless you all. We love you. Thank you for coming tonight. And greet someone in Jesus' name. See you on Wednesday for those who are able to make it. God bless you.